السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah We praise Him, we worship Him, we seek His assistance, we seek His tawfiq We pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us And we pray to Him to give us the tawfiq to apply it فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Tonight is the sixth of Jumada al-Ula of the year 1443 since Hijrat al-Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم which translates into December the 10th of the Gregorian calendar 2021 I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night a blessed night and to make all the brothers and sisters who are physically with us in this masjid or who might be tuning in live, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make them mubarakin, blessed in themselves and in their families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep giving us the tawfiq to sit around these circles of knowledge which are circles of dhikr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that are witnessed by the angels, showered by the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal and I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our ja'izah, our reward, all of us, when we are done here, is that it will be said to us, go for you have been forgiven, Allahumma ameen. Without further ado, and I appreciate your patience about the delay, um, as you know, last month, this is a monthly halaqa, which is a commentary upon or uh, on these 40 hadith nawawi, uh, which are the most comprehensive hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, they are called 40 Hadith Nawawi, but in reality they are 42 of the most comprehensive Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. We had reached the Hadith, the 23rd Hadith, which we started commentary on last month in November, and we talked about the first statement, At-Tuhur, Shatrul Iman. Inshallah, we're going to continue where we left off uh, last month, Inshallah, and then we will continue from there. قال المصنف الإمام النووي رحمه الله تعالى الحديث الثالث والعشرون عن أبي مالك الحارث بن عاصم الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الطهور شطر الإيمان والحمد لله تملأ الميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله تملأان أو تملأ ما بين السماء والأرض والصلاة نور والصدقة برهان والصبر ضياء والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك كل الناس يغدو فبائع نفسه فمعتقها أو موبقها رواه مسلم The literal translation of this hadith is on the authority of Abu Malik Al-Harith ibn Asim Al-Ash'ari May Allah be pleased with him who said The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Purity is half of Iman Alhamdulillah fills the scales and subhanallah walhamdulillah fill that which is between the heaven and earth and the salah is a light and charity is a proof and patience is illumination and the Quran is a proof either for you or against you. Every person starts his day as a vendor of his soul, either freeing it or causing its ruin. It was related by Imam Muslim. Um, as I said, we already talked about the first statement, al-tuhuru shatru al-iman, and we talked about the two understanding, the two understanding of the scholars about this statement. Alhamdulillah, we're done with that. We continue, inshallah, with the second statement, which is 
his saying, alayhi salatu was salam, his saying, alayhi salatu was salam, walhamdulillahi tamla ul mizan. Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah fills the scales. This is in reality a great statement. And it encourages, inshallah, when we are done with the commentary, and you're going to see there's quite a bit of commentary on this very short statement, subhanAllah. But there is quite a, some commentary on it. When we are done with it, you'll see that it, it is a great encouragement for the servant of Allah Azza wa Jal to always have his tongue moist with Alhamdulillah. Because it is a great statement. It is an easy statement, but it is a great statement in the, in the eyes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And it is very heavy in the scale. Um, Alhamd is the word Alhamd. What does Alhamd mean? Ahmed, it means I praise someone. Which means I attribute all the perfect attributes to someone. Yani it is an affirmation of the perfect and the most complete attributes to somebody. I say in the Arabic language, Ahmed Lifulan Saniahu. Yani I praise somebody for what he did. If what he did was perfect, he did something, somebody did something in a perfect way. We say Ahmed Lifulan Saniahu. Yani ma sana. What he did, I praise him for what he for what he did. Which means that I praise the way he did something if it is perfect in a way that is suitable for the humans. Alhamd, when it applies to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, it means that I affirm to Allah Azza wa Jal all the types of perfection. All the types of perfection and the beautiful attributes to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So it is describing Allah Azza wa Jal with all types of perfection, all types of perfect attributes, with the love in the heart and with glorification. Al-Mahabba al-Qalbiya and al-Ta'zim. Why, why do we make those two conditions? Why do we say Alhamd? is to attribute and affirm to Allah Azza wa Jal all the perfect attributes with two conditions, with al-mahabba al-qalbiyya, with the love of the heart to Allah Azza wa Jal, and with al-ta'zim, exalting Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, and glorification of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because it is conceivable that somebody praises another person while they dislike him. They don't love him. Like, for example, if somebody is forced into praising a king, they used to be forced back in the day, for example, and even now, you could be forced into praising somebody while in reality, in your heart, you don't like them. You actually hate them. When we praise Allah Azza wa Jal, we actually do that with the al-mahabba al-qalbiyya. And with the ta'zim. Yani out of ta'zim lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala, we praise him. Why? Because again, somebody may praise another person for something in return. Back in the days, they used to, for example, to bring the poets. And they would praise the king for some money in, in return. They don't necessarily love them. They don't necessarily really glorify them. But it is because something they, they get in return. So there is a favor that they get in return. Even these days, it's not restricted to back in the day. Today, you know, somebody may praise somebody not because they love them or they, yani, they have high regard for them, but because they expect a favor in the return. And I think you know what I mean. That happens in a lot of, lot of cases and a lot of forms. So alhamd, when, applies to, when applied to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, it means that I attribute and I affirm to Allah Azza wa Jal all types of al-kamalat, al-kamal, al-mutlaq, all types of perfect attributes with the love in the heart and with the ta'zim of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, this lamb, let me just make it a little bit bigger. When you say Alhamdulillah, let me use a different color. You say this lamb, Alhamdulillah, the origin of the word is actually Alhamd li Allah. So Lam is the letter 
the letter حرف اللام but you don't say in the Arabic language li Allah you say lillah for it is easier in terms of pronunciation what is this lam alhamd lillah this lam is we call it in the Arabic language lam al istihqaq يعني الحمد حق لله تبارك وتعالى all of alhamd all of the praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah azza wa jal deserves all of the types of praises and attributes of perfection so all of the type of perfection are due to Allah azza wa jal مستحق لله in Allah مستحق to all the types of praises when you know that and when this is understood then you will see that Allah Azza wa Jal is praised for, for a lot of things that can be categorized under five categories. The first one, Allah Azza wa Jal is praised and deserves to be, to be praised for His oneness in His Lordship. That He is the only one Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other Lord. La Rabba Siwa. There is no other Lord with him who owns this universe and manages the affairs in this universe. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is the only Rabb. Mutafarrid fi rububiyyatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that what makes him subhanahu wa ta'ala deserving of the praise for being the one Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you actually praise Allah azza wa jal for being the only Lord, you also praise him for the effect and the impact of this rububiyyah, this lordship, which is that Allah Azza wa Jal created this universe, khalq, and for rizq. This is an impact and a consequence of his rububiyyah. If he is the Lord, he is the one who sustains the creation with a rizq, sustenance. He is the one who provides life, l-ihya, l-hayat. He is the source of al-hayat. And he is the source of al-mawt. He is the one who puts to death. Al-imata. In the hands of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala being the Lord. And he is the one who manages all affairs. Tadbir al-amr in this universe is, belongs to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. All what happens in this universe from al-taqdeer also is a result of his rububiyyah, of his lordship. So when we say that we praise Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for being the Lord, we praise Him also for all of this impact and consequence of His rububiyyah. And this hamd, this praise for Allah azza wa jal for being the Lord, it actually encompasses all the time since the beginning. As a matter of fact, even before time. Even Allah azza wa jal deserves the praise and praise is due to him even before there was somebody to praise him. He always deserved the praise subhanahu wa ta'ala for his yani, great attributes and great perfection subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second category, this is the first category. The second category, Allah Azza wa Jal deserves to be praised for his oneness in his Godship. For his oneness in his uluhiyyah. That he is the only one ilah who truly be deserves to be worshipped. He is the one true God subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other God in truth other than, than him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything and anyone who is worshipped in earth is only, only worshipped in falsehood and by transgression and by oppression. And the one who deserves the true worship, the true ibadah, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partners with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why he is praised for being the only deity, true deity worthy of the worship. His oneness in worship and in Godship is what makes him subhanahu wa ta'ala deserving of all the praise. The third category is that he is praised because he is one in his attributes and names. Al-Husna, Wassifat al 
Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has the beautiful names and the sublime attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala and each and every one of them is perfect from every aspect. Each one of those names and each one of those attributes are perfect in every aspect, from every perspective. There is no defect from any aspect to any name or attribute. And that is why subhanahu wa ta'ala, he deserves praise for being perfect in all of his names and attributes. No one resembles him subhanahu wa ta'ala in his names and attributes, nor in the how of these names and attributes. So for example, Allah Azza wa Jal is a Samir. He hears subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I as a creation, also I hear. But the hearing of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is absolute and perfect in every aspect. My hearing is very imperfect and only limited to a certain extent. So no one shares those names and attributes with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and his names and attributes are perfect from every, from every aspect. Those names, beautiful names, Al-Asma' Al-Husna and Al-Sifat Al-Ula, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala described them as Hal ta'lamu lahu samiyya. Do you know of anyone who is similar to him? No one. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Ikhlas, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَد And there is none co-equal or comparable unto him. So there is no uh, similar to him. There is no one similar to him. Nor there is anyone who is comparable to him or co-equal to him subhanahu wa ta'ala in his attributes and his names. Because his attributes and names are of perfection and completeness and uh, jalal and kamal subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is praised. Yuhmad, Allah azza wa jal yuhmad for his names and attributes. And also he is praised for every one of them. And he is praised for all of them in general. As well as Allah Azza wa Jal is praised for every one of his beautiful names and every one of his sublime attributes independently. And if you think about it, Ya Ibad Allah, this is from what takes the entire life. If you contemplate this, and if you think about how Allah is deserving of Alhamd, of the praise, this is from what يعني, your lifespan will يعني, expire before you could encompass all of those uh, attributes and all of this praise that Allah Azza wa Jal is worthy of, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth category, the fourth category, is Allah Azza wa Jal deserves to be praised for his sharia and for his orders. لشرعه وأمره Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرِ Surely his is the creation and the commandment. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said in the first ayah of Surah Al-Kahf that you are all aware of, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said, Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwajah. Praise, meaning all praise, is due to Allah who has sent down upon his servant the book which contains the commandments, the orders and the prohibitions. So the ayah started by praising Allah Azza wa Jal, by affirming the praise to Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, because of what? Alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. Because he sent down, who has sent down upon his servant the book, and has not made therein any deviance. Lam yaj'al, wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. There is no iwaj, there is no deviance in this book. All of it is perfect. All of the commandments, all of his sharia, all of the rulings in this book are perfect from every attribute. So Allah Azza wa Jal deserves to be praised for his sharia and for his orders, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, Allah Azza wa Jal deserves to be praised for the deen of Islam and for the sharia of Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam that he is pleased with as the final deen for humanity. That he made as a deen for humanity and he is pleased as with as the final sharia, as the last sharia. So Allah wa ta'ala is praised for sending down the book 
like he praised him subhanahu wa he himself subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of surah al-kahf and he is praised for all the orders and the prohibitions in this book in other words for the sharia in its entirety sharia at muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so every order in this book or in the sharia and every prohibition in the book or in the sharia is something that we praise allah azza wa jal for every order Kul Amr and Kul Nahi is something that Allah Azza wa Jal deserves to be praised for. And this, subhanAllah, is from what يعني, opens the heart of the believers uh, to يعني, a lot of types of knowledge of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala from His Fadl, from His favor upon us of the Sharia al Islam, the perfect Sharia and His orders and prohibitions. And also it opens from the types of the love to Allah Azza wa Jal, Mahabba lillah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Who favored us with this deen and this sharia, who bestowed upon us this great ni'mah of the deen of Islam and the guidance to it. And that is why we say that Alhamdulillah Ladi Hadana Lihada. Wama kunna linahdadi lawla an hadan Allah. So all praise to Allah Azza wa Jal who guided us to this sharia and to this guidance. And we wouldn't have been guided had Allah Azza wa Jal not guided us to it. So this love to is sharia and the love to the rulings and the orders and the prohibitions in sharia this is something that we praise Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for and that is why we notice that the people of knowledge ahl al-ilm who are the most literate they are the most knowledgeable in the sharia and in the ahkam of sharia they are the ones who praise Allah azza wa jal the most they praise yahmadun Allah the most and they praise him for every hukum for every ruling for every knowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal taught them and for every ruling that they taught to others, every matter, every mas'ala from masail al-ilm, every matter from the matters of al-ilm, they praise Allah Azza wa Jal for it. And that is why they are the most praising of all us, of all of us, Ahl al-ilm, the people of knowledge, yani the people of sharia because of their knowledge of sharia they are the ones who are the most praising of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The fifth category that Allah Azza wa Jal deserves the praise is that He is praised for His creation and His Qadar. His creation and for His Qadar subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, when He created, He created everything with Qadar, with Taqdeer with preordainment subhanahu wa ta'ala like he said subhanahu wa ta'ala inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadar inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadar verily we have created all things with qadar yani with predestination so allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in his orders in his universal orders that this happens in such a way that this takes place in certain way right in his universe from for example you know giving bounties to certain people to whomever Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to bestow his favor upon and from decreeing the calamities the different tri tri uh, tri uh, tribulations and uh, hard times and tests and trials upon those whom Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to test all of this Allah Azza wa Jal deserves the praise for that that his decree is the perfect decree and the wisdom behind his taqdeer is the greatest and ultimate wisdom. Even if you do not understand it. Even if you do not understand why this is happening. The qadr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and the way certain things or all matters happen in this universe is from the ultimate wisdom of Allah azza wa jal and he is to be praised for that subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we praise Allah azza wa jal for his khalq, for his creation and for his taqdeer subhanahu wa ta'ala and every type of taqdeer makes allah azza wa jal deserves of uh, of the praise alhamd subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is subhanallah yani from what certain people may become conscious of when allah azza wa jal gives you something or when allah azza wa jal blesses you with something you say alhamdulillah but a lot of people are also heedless about it they are heedless about a lot of the taqdeer of Allah Azza wa Jal and they don't praise him for that. 
who actually are the ones who are most praising of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala are the ones who are most conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal and are most conscious that Allah Azza wa Jal deserves praise for all his decree and qadr even if it is unpleasant and subhanallah yani the prophet alayhi salatu was salam he was the ones who are the most praising of Allah Azza wa Jal of all this ummah even during the times of calamity Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most praising to Allah Azza wa Jal during the time of Sarra of the ease and during the time of Darra the time of difficulty and the time of test and trial and uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praise would praise Allah Azza wa Jal for every ni'mah for every blessing that he bestowed upon him and also he would praise Allah Azza wa Jal when something befalls him that is unpleasant that is unpleasant now this is not something that a lot of people would be able to understand who would understand this are the ones who are uh, yani they understand that this taqdeer is the most perfect taqdeer this taqdeer of Allah Azza wa Jal is the most perfect taqdeer even if you dislike it even if it is unpleasant from your perspective but it is the most perfect and it is the most beneficial to you the fact that it came from Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is what makes him subhanahu wa ta'ala deserving of uh, alhamd and deserving of al-thana and of the praise subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, the people of knowledge are the ones who are the most understanding of this type of alhamd, this type of alhamd to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Uh, <clears throat> but what is Yani important for us to understand from this statement is to be conscious that Allah Azza wa Jal is deserving. Even if you're not able to encapsulate and to fully understand that Allah Azza wa Jal deserves alhamd and the praise because of his taqdeer, then at least you should be conscious that Allah Azza wa Jal is worthy of, of the alhamd, of the praise. And then you keep training yourself that you always see whatever Allah Azza wa Jal decreed as something that is good for you. And it is what is most perfect to you. And that is why he subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves alhamd subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we said, alhamdulillah. We said this lamb is what? Called lamb. Let's see who was awake. We, we called it a specific name. We said this lamb, alhamdulillah. This lamb is lamb. الاستحقاق يعني الحمد is حق لله تبارك وتعالى hence it is called الاستحقاق يعني in other words الحمد لله يعني الله مستحق للحمد understood clear so all praise all praises are due to Allah عز وجل حق لله that is why it is called لام الاستحقاق and uh, يعني just a uh, criteria to, uh, to, to, to tell if it is lam al-istihqaq or not because there are different types of lam. If what comes after that is a meaning, like alhamd, alhamd is not something that is concrete. It is a meaning. If it is a meaning, then when the lam comes attached to it, it is lam al-istihqaq. So you say shukru lillah, alhamdulillah, yani all thankfulness and all gratitude belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal and he is deserving of that. Likewise, he, he deserves and all praises are due to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Then he said this praise that is due to Allah Azza wa Jal, all of the praises and all of the attributes of perfection that are due to Allah Azza wa Jal, يَمْلَأُ mizan. He said, يَمْلَأُ or تَمْلَأُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ I'm uh, using a different color. Tamla al mizan. It fills the scales. It fills the scale. So whenever you say Alhamdulillah, this word that you said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it fills the scale. And this is similar to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith which is related by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. 
um, which I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with it and you may have heard it, have heard it. Hadith Abu Huraira radiyallahu an. You know where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kalimatani, khafifatani ala al-lisan, thaqilatani fil mizan, thaqilatani fil mizan, habibatani ila al-rahman, subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanallah al-azim. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are two expressions which are very easy for the tongue. How difficult is it to say subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanallah al-azim? Or Alhamdulillah, very easy. He said, which are very easy for the tongue to say, and they are, uh, and they are very heavy in the scale. This is from their greatness. And are very dear to the most merciful, meaning Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. They are Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Azim. And we're going to see in a, in a little bit moment, in a little, yani in a little bit, met, in a little bit or in a moment, that alhamd and al tasbih, they are always, they come together and they complement one another. Alhamdulillah and Subhanallah, they complement one another always. And we're going to see this in a little moment. So when he said, alayhi salatu was salam, tamla al mizan, it fills the scale. This is in reality. It fills the actual scale of deeds on the day of resurrection. This is not, this is not a metaphorical expression or a figure of speech. This is a real scale of deeds that will be used on the day of resurrection to weigh the actions of the son of Adam. So this is a physical, real scale of deeds on the day of resurrection. And this filling of the scale is an actual filling, is a real filling, uh, not, not a metaphorical action. Because some people looked at this and they said, well, how can Alhamdulillah be weighed? They use their own intellect. They say, wait a minute, saying Alhamdulillah, how can you weigh that? It's not a, an object that you can put in the scale and weigh, right? You weigh this bottle of water, you weigh this, for example, mask, you put it in the scale, you put yourself in the scale, you weigh yourself. But how do you weigh saying Alhamdulillah? It's a statement, it's a word that you utter with your tongue. How can you weigh that? So they said this is not act an actual weighing, this is a metaphorical expression. We say no, it's not. It is a physical and a real weighing on the day of resurrection. And this scale of deeds is actually a real physical scale of deed on the day of resurrection. And the Imam al-Tahawi in his famous Aqeedah, uh, Aqeedah al-Tahawiyah that we actually commented on for a while, for a couple of years uh, in a previous uh, halaqa. Uh, one of the statements in it, he said, the Imam al-Tahawi, he said, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِالْبَعْثِ He said, we believe in the resurrection. وَجَزَاءِ الْأَعْمَالِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And the reckoning for deeds on the day of resurrection. وَالْعَرْضُ وَالْحِسَابِ and the showing of, uh, the, uh, de of, the, uh, of the detailed account of deeds and al-hisab, which is the questioning. وَقِرَاءَةِ الْكِتَابِ The reading of the book. Everybody will read their book and what's in it. وَالثَّوَابُ وَالْعِقَابِ And the reward and punishment. وَالصِّرَاطُ وَالْمِيزَانِ يعني We believe also in al-sirat, which is the path uh, uh, over the fire and al-mizan, which is the scale of deeds. So all of these are real things. These are real things on the day of resurrection. Some people said that this is actually only a speech, a figure of speech. We say it's not. It is not. It is an actual and on its apparent meaning. It is an actual weighing and an actual scale of, of deeds. Um, and this is from the aqeedah of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah that they believe in the scale. We believe in al-mizan in the scale of deed on the day of resurrection. And this is actually mentioned in Al-Quran. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالُ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ And we shall set up balances of justice on the day of resurrection, then none will be dealt with unjustly in anything. And if there will be the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it. So it is very detailed weighing, very detailed. If, even if it is a, a mustard seed, we will bring it and sufficient are we as reckoners. 
In the ayah of Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ Then those whose scales, meaning of good deeds, are heavy, these, they are the successful. And those whose scales of good deeds are light, they are the ones who lose their own selves. In fire or in hellfire will they abide. There is also a rather long hadith, which is Hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anh, that just because it is a long hadith, I'm going to restrict it to the English translation only in the interest of time. But it is such a very powerful hadith, that's why I wanted to make sure that we actually listen to it. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will summon a man from among my nation on the day of resurrection. While creation witness, yani while all the creation will be witness, will witness what happens. And will show him 99 records, 99 records containing the deeds of this person, of this slave. Each record filling as much as the sight can reach, subhanAllah, each one of them. And there's 99 of them. <coughs> and will then say, do you deny any of this? It is all full, full of bad deeds, of you know, sins and mistakes and uh, dhurub. So Allah Azza wa Jal will say, do you deny any of this? Have my scribes, the angels, the ones who were writing and recording all of your actions, have my scribes who recorded it dealt you with any injustice? He will say, no, Lord. He will say, do you have a reason? Yani, do you have an excuse for what you did? Do you have excuses to f put forward? So he will say, no, O Lord. He will say, notwithstanding, you have a good deed with us. For this day, you will not be unjustly dealt with. SubhanAllah, look at the justice of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Then a card will be brought forward on which, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah is inscribed, which he believed in, which this servant believed in in this dunya. And يعني, he used to utter, bring your scale. Allah Azza wa Jal will then say, bring your scale. And this is what we are interested in, bring your scale. So it is a scale on the day of resurrection. He will say, what will this one card do as compared to these records? 99 records, each one of them is uh, to, يعني, to the extent of my sight. Allah Azza wa Jal will say, you will not be unjustly dealt with then the records will be placed on one scale and the card will be put on the other scale, then the card will outweigh the records. The one card that contains Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, this tawheed, this is this heavy on the day of resurrection, and it is one of the primary reasons for the expiation of the sins, will outweigh all of those 99 records of sins. Uh, for nothing is heavier than the name of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. One of the scholars, he commented on this hadith and saying this hadith proves that al-mizan, the scale, has two physical scales and that even though that some of the deeds may not be physical entity themselves, yani when you say, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah in this dunya, it's not something that we can weigh, can you now? Is there, a way, is there a scale where you can weigh this statement? No. Is there a way, is there a scale in this dunya where you can weigh alhamd? No, there is no such a scale. But on the day of resurrection, Allah Azza wa is capable of everything. And there will be the scale who can weigh these statements. There will be a scale that can weigh these statements. So they will still be weighed as Allah is able of to do everything. This is among the beliefs of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and there are many ahadith that support this fact. So we say the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, walhamdulillah tamla'ul mizan, is it is a yani a real statement. It means that alhamdulillah will be weighed on the day of resurrection in a real uh, scale. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala likewise will actually make some of the actions. Because similarly, similar to that, when you say, when you do a good deed to somebody, how do you weigh that? Yani, brother, for example, Rashid, wafaqahullah, let's say, for example, he said, Assalamu alaikum to me. 
That's a good action. You agree with that? This is amal salih. Type. How do you weigh that? For example, a brother such and such, he, he did ihsan to somebody else. How can you weigh that? It cannot be weighed in this dunya. But on the day of resurrection, it will be weighed. It will be weighed. The action, for example, of remo removing the dirt from the path of people. This removal, how can you weigh it? But it will be weighed on the day of resurrection. So all of the speeches, all of the words, the good words, and all of the beliefs, all of the, uh, the, the sayings and the speeches and the actions and all even the movements that you make in a good way to, for Allah, they will be weighed on the day of resurrection. And some people will have heavy scale and these are the successful and some of them will have very light scales and these are the losers. طيب. The last thing that I want to actually, uh, يعني, uh, not to make it too long, the, one, the last thing that I wanted to uh, talk about or comment on is what does it mean tamla al mizan fills the scale. The scholars and the people of knowledge have looked at this statement and they had two ways of understanding it. Two ways of understanding it. The first one is that it fills the scale, meaning that it is not the first thing that is put in the scale, but rather it is put after something else and it completes filling the scale. Yani, for example, like you say, let's say I have a cup of water. This cup of water already had water, and then I pour more water into it to fill it. There was something in it, and then you complete it by, by pouring more water until you fill it. So the scholar, they said, this is what it means, tamla il mizan. So there is something that is put in the scale first, and then alhamdulillah comes and fill it to its, يعني, to the full. Fill it to the, to the full. It is يعني, as if it is, uh, filled with Alhamdulillah. The second understanding is that Al Iman is two halves. Al Iman and a deen in general is two halves. The first one is Tanzi of Allah Azza wa Jal, exalting Allah Azza wa Jal from the shortcomings and the ill descriptions, and the other half is confirming all the perfection to Allah Azza wa Jal. So there is a tanzih and there is a tas uh, or tasbih and there is a tahmeed. Two halves. So first Allah Azza wa Jal puts a tasbih in the scale and then comes alhamd to fill it. This is the second understanding. And you know that a tanzih or a tasbih is the meaning of which is exalting Allah Azza wa Jal and freeing him from all types of imperfection or all types of uh, yani defects. So Allah Azza wa Jal is far away from any defect and from any imperfection. When you say Subhanallah, what is the meaning of that? Yani you say Allah Azza wa Jal is far from any defect or any imperfection. Allah Azza wa Jal has no shortcomings. No ill description can be attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the meaning of Subhanallah. You say Subhanallah. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't have any, any imperfection. So tasbih is tanzihur rabb, is to uh, exalt Allah Azza wa Jal above any defect and above any, any imperfection. That is in his lordship, in his godship, and is in his names and attributes. So there's no imperfection in his lordship. There is no imperfection and defect in Allah Azza wa Jal in his godship. And there is no defect or imperfection or shortcoming in Allah Azza wa Jal in any of his names and attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a tasbih. Then alhamd comes to attribute all the perfect attributes. You see the difference? That is why they complement one another. And that is why in most of the ahadith, not all of them, but in the vast majority of the ahadith, they always come together. And even in the next statement, wa subhanallah walhamdulillah. Subhanallah walhamdulillah. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanallah al-azim. 
So you notice that always a tasbih and a tahmid, they come together, coupled together in the same statement because they complement one another. A tasbih is exalting Allah Azza wa Jal above defects and imperfection. And alhamd is attributing to him all the perfect attributes and praises. I hope that this is now, inshallah, clear. طيب. So, tamla al-mizan, tamla al-mizan, it means that if, يعني, if the understanding is that the tasbih, subhanallah, is put first in al-mizan, and then alhamd comes after that and it fills it. The tasbih is put first, and then alhamd is put second in al-mizan until it fills it. So between both the tasbih and the tahmid, they fill the scale of the deeds of, of the servant. And they are complementary of one another. What supports this understanding is that a tasbih is not the same as a tahmid as we just described. The meaning of a tasbih is not the same as a tahmid. They have different meanings. And we said this is a tanzih and this is attributing all the perfect attributes to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. A tasbih alone is not glorifying Allah azza wa jal perfectly. Why that is? If you only restrict yourself to tasbih to Allah azza wa jal without attributing all the praises to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it could be understood as there is a defect because if you say that Allah azza wa jal it doesn't have any defects, doesn't have any imperfection. But then you don't attribute the perfections to him, then there's something missing in here. Let me give you a comparison just to make it يعني, closer to uh, being understood. To Allah belongs the greatest example. To Allah be belongs the greatest uh, example. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى But if we want to make it يعني, simplify the understanding of this, let's say this masjid has carpets. طيب. Now we want to change this carpet and we want to يعني, beautify this masjid, take care of this masjid. If we remove this carpet, but then we don't put new carpets, is that a good thing? Do we say that we actually renovated the masjid? No, we, we don't say that. When do we say that? We say that when we remove the old carpet and put brand new carpet brand new carpet to Allah belongs the greatest example so Allah Azza wa Jal is not glorified only by a tasbih but then a tahmeed after a tasbih so we say subhanallah walhamdulillah we exalt Allah Azza wa Jal then we praise him with the perfect attributes and we praise him with the perfect uh, يعني, praises subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why there is a statement in the or a, 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 a term that we use in the Arabic language, we say التسبيح is تخليه. يعني we free Allah Azza wa Jal from all uh, from all defects. تخليه تخلي الله from all defects. والتحميد تحليه يعني from beautification. You know الحلي of the of the woman, the adornments. Do you know those uh, the يعني the uh, rings and the يعني all the uh, beautification jewelry احسنت all the jewelry in the arabic language we say, we, we call it الحلي right الحلي from التحليه from beautification so التسبيح is تخليه and التحميد is تحليه so between التخليه and التحليه this is when we are really glorifying Allah تبارك وتعالى and attributing to him the most perfect praises, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at tasbih, like we said with the tahmeed, Allah Azza wa Jal, we praise Allah Azza wa Jal, and we said there are five categories. Remember that? Rububiyyah, because of his rububiyyah, and because of his oneness in al-uluhiyyah, and because his oneness in his names and attributes, and because of his uh, sharia and orders, and because of his khalq, creation, and al-qadr, taqdeer. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is exalted. We, يعني, we make tasbih to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and we free him from all defects and shortcomings in all of these five categories, like a tahmeed. 
So there are no shortcomings to Allah Azza wa Jal or defect in His rububiyyah. Nor there are shortcomings or defects in His Godship. Or in His names and attributes. Or in His Sharia. There is no defect in His Sharia, in, in His orders and, uh, and uh, prohibitions. Nor there is any defect in His taqdeer subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a perfect taqdeer. There is no defect or imperfection or يعني, ill description of His taqdeer subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these five categories in the tasbih, they complement these five categories in Alhamdulillah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And when the person exalts Allah Azza wa Jal in these five categories and praises Allah Azza wa Jal in these five categories, that person has reached the highest level of glorification of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. This is A'la al-Maqamat. This is the highest level of glorification of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And that is why yani, this is the greatest. This is what now you probably understand better. What makes this statement, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, such a great statement, uh, dear to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, beloved, mahbuba min Allah, beloved by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, heavy in the scale of uh, deeds of the, act, of, the, of the servant. And that is why yani, if you fill your life with it, wallahi, it deserves it. It deserves to actually fill and to mention it and to utter it and to say it with understanding as much as you can uh, of your life. It is يعني, easy on the tongue, easy on the tongue, but it is great in the scale of deeds uh, of the actions of the servant of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Walhamdulillahi tamla ul mizan. So now we understand this. Tayyib. Should we continue for another only few minutes or are you tired already? Because I wanted to say, uh, This should be easier after commentary on the previous uh, statement. Or should we just delay it till next time? Delay it till the next time? Uh, I hope that inshallah it is now clear what Alhamdulillah Tamla'ul Mizan fills the scale means and how great this statement is. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are always conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal, exalting Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Him for everything uh, from His Lordship to His Godship to His names and attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to this great Sharia that He guided us to to his taqdeer subhanahu wa ta'ala, to his ordainment that he decreed to every one of us and that he ordered in his universe. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are always uttering the statement, make it heavy in the scale of our deeds uh, on the day of resurrection. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are always conscious of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, any questions or comments or clarifications? Now. طيب. Uh, this is actually part of it. Yani when you say all praises to Allah Azza wa Jal, it is inclusive of shukr in the tongue. It is inclusive of gratitude by the tongue. Yani when you say, uh, I am grateful to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, this is part of alhamd. Although they are not synonymous. A lot of people, they make mistake and they can make alhamd and shukr equal or the same thing. Yeah, and alhamd is a shukr and a shukr is alhamd. That is not the case. The meaning of alhamd is different than a shukr and there are differences between the two of them. If you want, for example, very briefly, inshallah, just yeah, to uh, address your question. For example, alhamd is only with yeah, the tongue, while a shukr can be with the actions as well. Yeah, you, you are grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal through the actions that you do. You pray, you are thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal for this bounty of the body. When you give zakat, you are being thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal for this bounty of wealth. I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Do, O family of Dawood alayhi salam, out of gratitude. So gratitude, shukr, can be with the tongue as well as it can be with the actions. But alhamd is only with the tongue. Second difference, for example, Alhamd, you praise Allah Azza wa Jal whether He decreed something to you or to others. Yani, 
let, let me give you an example. You see somebody, for example, who returned safely from a travel. You say, Alhamdulillah ala salama. You say, praise to Allah Azza wa Jal for, re for your return safely. Shukr, you only are grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal for what belongs to you. You don't say shukr Allah for his wealth. Yani somebody Allah Azza wa Jal gave a lot of wealth. You don't say shukr Allah for giving him wealth. You say shukr Allah for giving me wealth. Or for blessing me, for example, with perfect health. For blessing me with children. For blessing me, for example, with a righteous wife. So shukr belong, yani is, uh, is attributed or, or you say shukr or you, are, you, you say gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal for what is concerning you, not others. But alhamd, you say alhamdulillah, for example, for your, for your recovery from your illness. You don't say shukr lillah for your recovery. You see the difference. So there are differences between the two. Shukr is not alhamd. There are some yani, differences and some specifics and generality with respect to shukr and alhamd. Now, Yeah. This is from the wrong translation because you know always in translation unfortunately there are a lot of things are yani lost in the way. You translate the Arabic language English language is not like the Arabic language. And there are things that when you translate they are subhanallah they don't get translated accurately. So I'm, I I think I know what you're talking about. In a lot of translation, you see they mix between shukr and alhamd as if they are the same thing. They are not. They are not. Alhamd is actually more general and bigger than shukr. But alhamd lillah also is shakir lillah with his tongue. So alhamd is to attribute all praises to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala with the love in the heart and with glorification of ta'zim al mahabba al qalbiya and al ta'zim now any other question طيب if there are no no more questions wafaqani allah wa iyyakum lil ilm al nafi' wal amal al salih wa hadha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakumullahu khayran